Okay, so um, I've been working on this project for a number of years, actually probably a lot of years, at least five years, and for the first time ever I think I'm actually moving on it. So um, I've got, I've got my, uh, right now I've got about two computers involved in this little project. One is just for printing, this one is for doing the calculation in uh, MathCAD. And um, if you've followed any of my professor videos, you know you've seen some of my MathCAD work. Um, of course, I love MathCAD. Um, well, let's take a look because I don't have a screen. Um, I don't have a screen adapter, but I'll go through some of the equations real quick. Like now, this what this is? It's an aluminized. Uh, this project is an aluminized mylar that works on basically on electricity. So you shape the. Uh, it's a telescope. It's a telescope that's made out of aluminized mylar, and it, the uh, shape of the mirror, and it's a reflecting, of course, will be a Newtonian style. And for me, it'll probably be a new invention. It, it's not new, um, but no one has ever got uh, to the point where they can make one that's viable. So the idea isn't new. It's been around a pretty long time, and, and mylar has been around a really long time. Mylar has been around since the 1950s. No, 1950s. Aluminized mylar uh, probably popped up when all those balloons popped up. So I've come up with a few ideas. Mostly I had to work out some electric field equations. And I'll, I don't want to go through too many of those because I don't know how much that... If, if I do anything, I'll, I'll write a paper on it and I'll submit that to some publication and you can read the paper on it. In the meantime, let's take a look at some of these equations. First, I'm going to show you uh, the pattern that I developed and I don't know if you can even see this. You might be able to see this. Okay, so what this is is the shape of the mirror. This is the curvature of the mirror and I need this little graph and this is a two scale um, each one of these little pot, uh, lines is one inch so this is one half of the mirror I don't know if you can see the lines or not but one inch and um, this is the center of the mirror and this is the outer edge so you, see, you can see it's about a nine inch uh, a radius which is going to be an eighteen inch diameter mirror to, to start out with and it's got about 0.2, no, 0.25275. I'd have to look at that. I, I'll recalc I can look at that real quick. Uh, about a 0.275 inch um, rise or drop at the center. With a focal point is around, let's look at where the focal point is. Now, we did um, some of these. RFE RF is as in this it's 350 centimeters. Uh, of course, calculating for a parabolic mirror is uh, y of x is equal to x squared of a two times RF. Uh, the DP, which is I don't know that it's 45.72 centimeters. I don't know what that is. AP, and I do have it defined somewhere. Uh, DP is the diameter of the mirror. Okay, um, which is um, basically nine inches, uh, or actually the eighteen inches. Uh, Forty-five. Uh, Forty-five is going to be eighteen inches. AP is the um, is the radius. Okay, so here I start out with these, you know, I, I had all these, these and this, this one is, the only difference between this one and that one is that this one is, uh, this one is done in centimeters and that one's done in inches. And of course you get the, uh, actually this one is in meters. So when I graphed it out, it's, uh, I started uh, looking at some of this, doing this with Kapton, um, Actually, I started with mylar, but one of the problems with mylar is that the uh, 
modulus, uh, the what they call the Young's modulus, or the uh, stretch modulus, is different between uh, the X and Y. What they call the MD and the uh, TD, which is machine direction and transverse direction. So we get different uh, moduli of stretching for uh, uh, with. Uh, Mylar than we do with Kapton. Kapton is uh, same in the MD and the TD direction, but it seems like that's not consistent. Here's the Young's modulus for Kapton film is 30, 307,000 psi, and the uh, for Mylar film, and this is in the MD, and then this is Mylar in the TD. I should mark that it's TD. All right. So in the machine direction is 710,000 psi, and for uh, y in the transverse direction is 740,000. So that's the difference, not much. 30 over or 3 over 71 is probably about 5% difference. Uh, Young's modulus determines how much this uh, this material will will expand in each of those directions. So if you can't get it to expand in both directions the same amount, then you're not going to have a good uh, you're not going to have a good parabolic mirror to make a telescope out of. Uh, let's see, epsilon r permittivity of the dielectric uh, epsilon naught is of course it's, uh, dielectric is free space, it's going to be air. Epsilon naught is permittivity of free space. These are some of the things that we need in the calculation. Uh, expected deflection is for a parabolic mirror is going to be the x squared over 2 r sub s per w sub b. And what that says is that this deflection is, is what's called w at 0 centimeter. That's at the center of the mirror is going to be minus 0.74727 centimeters. And uh, we can figure that out in what it inches inches. But um, if I change the units here, it'll it'll change it to inches. Um, but it's like around three tenths of an inch, roughed out. All right, so um, did all these calculations here. Here's what it looks like. And of course, got a bunch of stuff. You know. How I was doing all of this is probably something that can go, uh, basically is going to have to go into a paper because it's just way too much to try and explain here. But as you can see, I have many, tried many variables. Here is uh, the voltages of Kapton and voltages of, uh, for uh, Mylar. And of course, the Kapton takes much less voltage. It's like around 900 volts to bend this stuff. Whereas with um, with Mylar, it takes uh, close up to 1300 volts by these calculations to shape the mirror. Now, uh, this just went on for months. I just I get I start getting into a mathematical problem and I can't help myself. Here are my calculations and uh, of course you can see they get pretty complex and pretty messy. I break it down into a numerical analysis, a point-wise numerical analysis and when you get this deep into it you, 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 you tend to start losing track of all the variables because you have so many of them. Here, for example, uh, C sub I theta 1. <laughs> and uh, here, here is C sub O theta 1. And these are just two different calculations of something. One is N of R, N sub R minus 1. This is just N sub R uh, times C theta 1. And here are, this is just some of the, um, the outputs. So on, and, and of course, strain, we're calculating strain. I hope I'm getting some of this. I don't know how much of this is actually going to come back out. So there's there's just a tremendous uh, amount of calculating that I did.
before I even started this whole business. And in the end, we hope to, um, of course, this uh, T, MDR, M MDRI, MDRO, MDR, MD theta, and and these are actually um, calculating the angles when you rotate around um, a parabola, a parabolic mirror that is misshapen in one direction or the other. As I said, the transverse uh, moduli, the transverse and machine moduli are different from mylar. But mylar is so much cheaper and easier to get, I can buy a 50 foot roll of it, uh, 5 feet wide, 4 feet wide for 25 bucks. And I tried to buy a 10-foot roll of aluminized Kapton. They wanted $600 for it. I'm like, man, that's crazy. Even Kapton is not that expensive. But, I mean, they just, um, Kapton might have been $25 for what they were trying to, to sell me. But they aluminized it, and it all of a sudden price multiplies by, you know, 13. So I said, well, that's kind of ridiculous. And I even wrote that back, and then I never heard back from the people. If you buy it from China, it's a lot cheaper. All right, so a lot of these calculations, these are error. Um, alpha error is the error angle due to perfect flatness between electrodes. Okay, so if I'm going to use electrodes on the um, in this calculation, what happens is that you will be bending um, using electrodes and being able to shape the mirror any way you want. But when you put an electrode down below, each electrode will have a certain amount of force on the mirror depending on its position and how far it is from each point on the mirror. Here's the flat one. So flat error max. Now this says 29 nanometer and when we're looking at that kind of error um, you're, we're looking at really we, we need nanometer sized errors because if you're on a flat mirror you've got to keep it really clean you've got to keep it really really uh, parabolic so if I have um, basically what we're looking at is is two points two that are pulling down on the mirror each one will exert a force um, not just on the, on the mirror at that point, but out along that point. So we have a, a node here, and it's pulling down along there. Another node over here, and it's pulling along there. So it's pulling here, but it's also pulling there, and that changes, the force changes by the distance. And it's the square of the distance, the amount of force that it puts on it. So uh, the number of electrodes is pretty critical to this whole thing. If I put a single electrode on this uh, mirror, it would just put the most horrible shape on it. So anyway, that's uh, part one. And when I got done, of course, we printed out this. So what happens? Let's go take a look at that. Uh, and I did that on another computer. Thanks for watching my program. If you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for an organized listing of my YouTube videos, go to my website, www.wheremyplacebos.com, and click on videos. Have a great day.